I never really knew who my paternal grandmother was. I knew she was a person my mother hated and someone my father could hardly stand. She liked to be called by her first name, Isabella, even by my father and me. She was someone I only met twice throughout my life, even though she lived about five miles from us. But each time I met her, some sort of fight would lead to her leaving a lot earlier than usual. I was 14 the last time I saw her. It was the day before Christmas, and my mother and father were trying their very hardest to keep the atmosphere as bright as they possibly could. My aunt was helping my mother with a massive feast, and my father and uncle were watching a movie with me. We were all trying our hardest to avoid my grandmother as hard as we could. It was around halfway through the movie when Isabella walked into the living room and asked, So, do you plan on spending the whole holidays messing around on the TV? She pointed at me and continued, Joseph, get your ass off the couch and come with me. I'll show you what a perfect family looks like. Before she could grab me, my father got in between us and said, Stop. I'm tired of hearing about this perfect family of yours. It's fake. You're crazy. And I don't want you spreading that to my son. She stormed out of the house and exited my life forever. Eight months ago, she passed away from a heart attack. She didn't have much, but she left it all to my father. After eight months of waiting, our family received the house, everything inside of the house, and $1.30 I found inside of a couch. After a short discussion between my mother and father, they decided to move into her house. It was bigger, and we could just put our newer furniture and appliances in the house and live a bit more comfortably. I was happy about their decision. They wanted me to stay in my grandmother's old room, and it was bigger as well as gave me my own restroom. The first three nights went by normally. I still went to the same school. My same three friends, James, Christian and Michael, came over to my house after school, and I generally stayed in my room at night. We were never a close family, and I never really cared about it until the fourth night in the house. It started around dinner time, and my mother was asking if I was sending any applications to colleges. I mumbled back that I was. After a couple of seconds of awkward silence, she said, If you really did apply to colleges, you would have to ask me for money to pay for the application fee. So, what's going on? Why are you trying to avoid college? After that, our conversation fell into a chasm of accusations from my mother and harsh retaliation by me. My father tried to stop the fight, but he was never a strong person. I finished dinner shortly after and went into my room. It didn't take me long to fall asleep, but I woke up around two to a small whining sound coming from my closet. Curious, I got off of my bed and looked around my room. After making sure no one was in my room, I walked up to the closet and placed a hand on the cool wooden door. Immediately, I felt a soft vibrating filling the door and felt, for the first time in a long time, absolutely peaceful. Slowly, my hand crawled down towards the doorknob and opened the door. It looked the same. A couple of coats on the hangers, a few board games, an old game system I never played, but there was a soft light coming from the back right corner of the closet. I reached towards the light and touched the corner of the room. The light immediately filled the room and I had to cover my eyes. After a couple of seconds, the light was gone and I was able to open my eyes once again. It was morning, and the first thing that caught my eye 
was how different my room looked. The walls that were once empty were now cluttered with various trophies I had won, signed posters of my favourite basketball players, and several newspaper clippings from our high school team winning state two years in a row to me deciding to go immediately into the NBA draft instead of going to college. My wall showed me the life I had always wanted to live. Everything else about the room was still the same. Feeling a bit excited, I ran out of my room and into the kitchen. My mother had already prepared my favourite breakfast, pancakes, bacon, eggs and sausages, and I greedily scarfed every bite down. My father walked into the kitchen while laughing and said, Whoa there, you ate my breakfast. It's fine, I'll just get something on my way to work. You got a big game today. Make sure you do well. Before I could even nod my head, he turned around and walked out of the door. School went by well until the basketball game. We were playing our rivals, and before the game, the coach told me that the team was depending on me for the win. I will spare you the details. I did absolutely terrible. I missed almost every shot, and by the end of the game, I could see the disappointed look on my father's face. On the ride back, my father tried to talk to me a couple of times, but he would just end up getting too frustrated and punching the steering wheel. Finally, when we were close to home, he turned to me and asked, What the hell was wrong with you? Why were you not perfect? I'm perfect for you. Your mother never did anything wrong to you. Why would you embarrass me like that? When we get home, I will show you what happens when you embarrass me in front of everyone. It's about time I beat some sense into you. As soon as he pulled into the driveway, I got out of the car and started walking into the house when he grabbed me by the back of my shirt and threw me onto the porch. A sharp pain erupted in my right shoulder and I scrambled back up just in time to get tackled back onto the ground by my father. He punched me in the face a couple of times before getting up, spitting on me and saying, You better not mess up next time. You'll lose your chances at a good draft pick and your mother and I will soon forget you as a son. He walked back inside, and a couple of minutes later, I reluctantly walked back inside and to my room. I waited until the clock hit 2am and quietly walked up to my closet. The door wasn't vibrating, and when I opened the door, there wasn't a light coming from anywhere in the closet. I was stuck. My mother woke me up the next morning, and I knew something was wrong as soon as I saw the sweat pouring down her face. While shaking me with my eyes opened, she said in a complete monotone voice, Please, please come with me to the room. I don't know what happened to your father. I woke up and saw him like this. She rushed out of the room. When I walked out of the room, I could hear her whistling. I could hear her whistling while the familiar sound of bacon sizzling filled the house. A groan came from my parents' room and I rushed into the room and immediately felt like I was going to throw up. He was lying in the bed while trying to get up, but I knew he wouldn't be able to. A knife was lodged into his nose, and his right arm was bent in three separate directions. His midsection was torn open, and with his left hand, he tried to shove his organs back inside of his body. Despite what he did to me last night, I still wanted to help him, but I didn't know what to do. I watched him die that morning and listened to his last words. I needed to be perfect, and I wasn't. I deserved this.
As I walked out of the room in a daze, I heard a soft whine come from my room. Without a second thought, I rushed into my room and felt the closet. It was vibrating. I opened the door and saw the bright light coming from the corner of the closet. Taking a deep breath, I touched the light and shut my eyes once again as light spilled out. I opened my eyes and found myself sitting in front of my closet. It was completely dark. I looked around and saw empty walls. After letting out a sigh of relief, I got back into my bed and fell asleep. I woke up yesterday morning and took another glance around the room. I couldn't help but smile when I saw the empty walls. My smile vanished by the sound of screaming coming from my parents' room. My mother rushed out and ran into my room. She pointed into the bedroom and half sobbed, half said, Your father, he isn't waking up, he, he's not breathing, call 911. The paramedics came, and they didn't need to use any type of machines to tell me he was dead. The rest of the day was spent dealing with my father. Around six, my mother dropped me back off at the house and told me she would get some food for us. She wanted me to go with her, but I knew that I didn't have a lot of time. The light was coming soon, and I needed to grab it. I needed to find some way to fix what I had done. So, here I am, sitting in front of my laptop, while looking at trophies I never had the joy of winning, hoping that someone out there will be able to help me. This reality is not my own, but I can't go back until I figure out what happened. <laughs>